Rico, who do we have? A Republican representative from Georgia, Congressman Jack Kingston. Good to have you on board this morning. You know, he's a guy a lot of people are talking Jack. about running for Senate. Senator yeah. Sambler seat. You going to jump in there, Jack? Well, we're taking a good look at it, and uh, you know, I will, uh, I will be letting you guys know. I can promise you that. That'd be great. Well, I love it, an answer like take that. Take a good look at it and let me know. I'd Real. love to come an down. Honest answer. An and, honest uh, answer. Like I come seek down advice and, in counsel. And okay. either, either be uh, for you or against you, whatever, whatever helps you. Whatever helps you. Right. <laughs> so, right. Jack, what's happening with the sequester? I mean, you know, you get both sides talking about Republicans are putting out press releases that are talking about how troop training is going to be damaged, national security is going to be damaged, cancer research is going to be cut. Of course, the president's putting out uh, his secretaries uh, talking about all the terrible things that will happen in their departments. Why can't we get a deal here? Uh, Joe, I, I think that we could. I think some of this, though, is drama. It seems to be governing by drama, it's something this White House seems to like. I, I just want to point out that, remember, this is an agreement that was made in August 2011. And it's just like back in high school when your teacher said, okay, you got six weeks to do your term paper, mm. but you wait till the last week. There's no reason to be in this position. May last year, the House passed an alternative to it. In December, we passed another alternative to it. And if the Senate will take that up and uh, modify it, amend it, do whatever, if they send it back to us today, we'll certainly sit down and take a look at it. Um, we have shown in the House that we think there are alternatives. And that's why on a timely level uh, basis, we send them over. Yeah, so Jack, you passed one, especially the one I think in November, that was more of a, a package, a complete package that the Senate could take up. Uh, have they taken that up? Have they put forward their own sequester plan in the Senate? Not that I'm aware of. I'm interested in what Senator Kane said, that uh, dozens of senators are talking with each other. Well, they ought to move the legislation. They ought to put it on the floor and send it back to us. You know, Joe, one of our, my great frustrations right now is we send lots of stuff to the Senate that dies over there. It doesn't get voted down. It doesn't get amended. It just gets ignored. And I think right now what we have to do is have full engagement in the legislative branch because I think there are a lot of Democrats and Republican senators and House members who want to work something out. But I think that they're waiting for a signal from the White House. Hey, you know, see, one of the great frustrations I've heard on the Hill when we've gone there is from Democrats and Republicans alike, senators and congressmen alike, they go, you know, why are we up here? Why do we even come here? Because we're not, there's not regular order. We don't pass our bill and the Senate passes their bill and then we come together in conference committee. We get right up to the end of the crisis and then three or four members get together with the president. And they do all of our work. We're irrelevant now. And it's, it's a growing frustration. No regular order there. Well, it's, that's frustrating in the fact that last, uh, last year Congress passed 30% of the number of bills that any other Congress has ever passed. The Senate has become the place where legislation goes to die. But let me just ask the Congressman, uh, I know you guys have put forward other proposals, but one of the key sticking points at the moment, as you know, of course, is revenues. And the view of the White House that there have to be revenues from tax reform from wherever in this package. And I know you're going to talk about entitlements, but let's assume that entitlements are on the table. From your point of view, are revenues on the table? Well, from our point of view, revenues and sequestration were one and the same. We split it January 1st and put the revenue portion first. And uh, the president won $618 billion in new revenue because of it. And now we're talking about the spending portion. These two were wrapped around each other. So um, it was divided in January. And I feel like we made the move on revenue. And now it's time to talk about the spending. Combined, 85 billion is about one half of one percent of the entire budget, which is close to four trillion dollars. Robert, real quick. Let me ask one question. This may take longer, and I apologize, <clears throat> Congressman. I think you were in Congress in 1997 when Newt Gingrich and Bill Clinton came together yes. for a deficit reduction <clears throat> package, even though they'd just been through a pretty nasty national election. Uh, what, in your opinion, do both sides have to do to get to that point? in 2013? I think one of the things that Newt and President Clinton had is they, they were focused on a deadline. They realized these things had to be done. They could not get away with postponing them forever and ever. And I think that's a, it's different now. Um, back then, the Senate actually passed budgets. The Senate hasn't passed a budget since the iPad was invented. Four years now. And so um, 
I think that we had a different sense of urgency and I think deadline. But I'll say this, if the president will invite people, senior members to come the CEO, if you will, not helpful. He yeah. needs to be bringing us together. Okay, I think it's time for the White House to be transparent about who they are talking to, uh, hearing that. Congressman Jack Kingston, though, thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Kingston for...